Welcome back to On The Fly. Today we're going to be taking a look and previewing the 2024 Women's World Championship happening in Utica, USA. So with that being said, we'll start off here with a little bit of the history from this tournament. We'll take a look back from last year with the U.S. winning gold, Canada and silver. And the years two before that, we had Canada winning them both. So obviously this tournament is somewhat competitive between the two teams and we normally do see, you know, Canada and the US one and two and then the rest of the team sort of fall behind that. And that's one of the things I'm really looking to see at this tournament if that would continue with Russia out as well due to political issues. They're another team that normally is in that mix of teams that'll fight for bronze and, and sort of fourth and fifth to try and see who's in group A this year. You know, I'm looking at one team in particular, a, a team that was in Group B last year with the Czechs. The Czechs are a team that have really sort of come uh, and sort of found their groove over the last couple of years and, and really sort of settled in to where they like to play hockey. And, and I think when we look at that, you see it on both the men's and the women's side now. They're forced to be reckoned with, and I see no reason why they can't win gold this or win bronze rather this year. Gold, I think, might be a stretch. But, of course, that's the nice thing about hockey is that it's never a predetermined result. The other teams that are normally in that sort of bronze medal range, we're looking at the Finns, the Swiss, the Swedes have sort of fallen out of contention the last, you know, five, ten-ish years. But with that being said, still another competitive, competitive year. And I expect none, none, uh, nothing different, really. Obviously, the, the gold medal tends to be sort of determined in terms of that matchup with Canada and the U.S. But at the same time, with the PDVHL well on its way, especially over the next couple of years, I expect that to become a little bit more contested, especially with players from the Czech. Because I think when we look at it, the women there are definitely starting to sort of find their role especially in their hockey game we've seen it on both sides men's and women's that is a, that's a hockey nation that's really starting to grow so I, i'm curious to see sort of what goes on there you know who's going to sort of find their way and who's going to become that sort of face of czech hockey especially on the women's side but with that we'll take a look sort of at the schedule for what's coming up with uh, we'll start off here on april 3rd with denmark and sweden coming up at 11 a.m finland and czechs at, at three o'clock p.m and then lastly, U.S. and Swiss at, th at 7 p.m. And this game, in terms of the game of the day, it has to be Finns and the Czechs. This is going to really sort of set the tone for what's going to happen. Obviously, the Finns are a team that's sort of on that older-ish side, a lot more veterans to their team. The Czechs are a little bit more younger, a little bit more sort of up and at them, if you want to call it that, ready to sort of jump to their... To, the, to their country's need and we'll see what's going on there i think that's really going to be a tone setter for the rest of this tournament especially for both teams those are the teams i really look towards for that third and fourth spot the swiss are another team that will sort of jump in there but for me fins and checks will be the game of the day on april 3rd april 4th the china japan denmark germany canada and finland i think in this one it has to be china and japan we take a look at the group b matchup going to be a really really interesting Interesting game, I think, when we look at it. That's one of the teams that are sort of fighting for their spot with the relegation. And remember, this year, it's even more important with the Olympics. Top six teams from this year's World Championship automatically qualify for the Olympics. So that top spot in Group B is crucial in the success for their country, especially towards the Olympics. But we'll move along here. So game of the day on April 4th will be China and Japan. April 5th. Sweden, Sweden and China, as well as Switzerland, Canada, Czechs, and the USA. The game of the day will be Sweden and China. I just think when you look at it, the Group B, it's a really, really tight Group B this year. I think any team can really pull through. And that's the nice thing about this term is there always seems to be an underdog, and that's sort of what you look for off that round robin because the, the Group A tends to be pretty predetermined. But really what you're looking to see is who's the team in Group B that's sort of jumping up. Last year was the Czechs. We'll see who it is this year. But as well, uh, on April 6th, We'll play, we'll see Japan and Germany play as well as Finland and the USA. Finland and the USA, in my opinion, will be the game of the day. Japan and Germany is another really, really good one. I just think when we look at it, Finland and USA are two teams. And at the same time, Finland is a team that has the potential to knock off the US. I don't see it happening, but at the same time, that's why you watch hockey because it's never a predetermined result. Anybody can take it, but I think Finland does have a shot yet again this year to have a shot to sort of, you know, scare US a little bit. 
especially in round robin play where the U.S. is starting to try and find their, their groove a little bit. A lot of college players, we made a video about the preview for Team USA, so we will sort of see if they're going to be able to sort of find their groove off the top. A lot of players coming from the NCAA. It tends to be a little bit of an adjustment period as they all sort of try and mesh together, find their chemistry, but we'll see if Finland can knock them off on April 6th. So well, April 7th, we have Sweden, Japan, Canada, and the Czechs, as well as China versus Denmark. For me, the game of the day here is China and Denmark, two teams once again fighting for their relegation hopes. I think when we look at it, China and Denmark are probably the two sort of lower seeded teams, in my opinion. When you look at it, probably Japan and Germany, in my opinion, are probably those top two. Sweden's in there as well. So I will be kind of curious to see how China and Denmark battle it out. That's the one nice thing about Group B is that it's never really decided. Anybody can take it. So we'll see on April 7th who wins in those games. As well as April 8th, we have Germany and Sweden, Switzerland and Finland, and USA and Canada. Of course, the game of the day, as you can probably guess, Canada and the USA gold medal preview. And I think when we look at it, it's going to be a good game between those two teams. We'll see who wins that one on April 8th. Then on April 9th, we have Germany and China, Czechs and Switzerland, and Japan and Denmark. This will conclude round robin play. Once again, I will sort of take a look at the game between Japan and Denmark or Germany and China. So let's Czechs and Swiss. All three games on that day are going to be really, really good. And they will probably actually have a lot of sway in the standings. Remember, with the Group A, top all five teams will make it, but it depends on their seeding, whether they have to play a 4v5. Czechs and Swiss might be a 4v5 matchup. So definitely watch that one, as well as Germany, China, Japan, Denmark. All four of those teams will likely be sort of fighting for their spot to make the quarterfinals top three from group b as well remember as we take a look at it that's the key we'll move on here to the quarterfinals now with april 11th and remember so this is how it's going to work we have uh, number one spot in group a plays three and b two and a plays two and b three and a plays one and b and lastly four and five and a will play each other in the quarterfinals then the semifinals as well as the placement game will happen on april 13th this game will be likely to sort of, I think the semifinals we're looking at it, likely will be sort of that high-end Group A. In my opinion, what the teams you're looking at here are the Czechs, you know, the Finns, Canada, U.S., I think will be the four teams in the semis. Time will tell, though. The Swiss are another team who sort of, sort of run under the radar quite a bit, so we'll see if they can pull it through here. Fifth and sixth, remember, this is really important for future tournaments. The fifth and sixth uh, placement round games will have basically be played between the likely if the loser of Group A, that 4v5 game, and normally will be Group A's or Group B rather's top spot. We'll see who, who plays in that one. It's basically the two highest ranked teams. And the loser of that game gets demoted to Group B in the next year's tournament. Not like the different divisions, but just the Group B. As remember, Group A makes the quarterfinals automatically the next year. If they don't, then they have to play for their, their way in. So that's what that's why the placement game is so important. Semifinals as well, April 13th. April 14th, we have the bronze medal game at 1 p.m. As well as the gold medal game at 5 p.m. And all these games will be listed in Eastern Daylight Time. So... As full schedule here for the double IHF Women's Worlds, and this is another tournament, right? When we look at it, very, very interesting. Anybody can really take this at the end of the day, but you're really looking forward to see if Canada can hold their reins, take it back from the U.S. this year. Obviously, with the U.S. winning, there's a little bit of retribution as well as the U.S. is on home ice. So we'll see what goes on there. We'll just throw the groups up here with the U.S., Finland, Canada, Czechs, and Switzerland all in Group A. They will all make it, as well as in Group B, China, Denmark, Germany, Sweden, and Japan. Remember, the bottom two teams will be sent to relegation. No relegation game. It's just the bottom two teams are knocked out of the tournament for next year and will be replaced and also, the last part, as we sort of talked about it, the, the the goal of this for any team is to make the top six. And when we look at it, right, top five basically will make it. So in terms of what Group A is looking for, they're just trying to make the quarterfinals. If they can win in the if all three top teams can beat Group B's teams, it doesn't matter. All of Group A will make it. Otherwise, we get into some crazy scenarios, but be sure to be tuned because if you come back on that day, for the world for the world's championship we will have all the situations covered for you so don't you worry about that but also as we take a look at it just some of the headlines that are going into this tournament number one the pwhl impact the pwhl has been 
going for well over, I think, three or four months now. And we'll see if that has any transition on the game. One of the big ones I'm really looking forward to seeing is how are the officials going to enforce it? We think to the PWHL, what's one of the biggest factors? And that is, obviously, when you look at it, they're a lot more physical in the PWHL from what the IHF allows. So we'll see sort of how that's being officiated, what the trans transition period is. Not too many PWHL players, which sort of surprised me on the U.S.'s roster. Canada is loaded with PWHL players. So we'll see if there's a transition period that there for them as well. And as well, the Olympic race. We talked about it. Top six teams from this tournament will move on to the Olympics. So it is very, very critical for any team that's sort of trying to fight their way in to see if they can make it. As well, and when it comes down to Canada, USA, we have the story of rookies versus the vets. And this is one that I'm really, really looking forward to seeing. Can Canada's veterans knock off the U.S. rookies? Because when we look at it, the U.S. is dominated with, with some of the more younger players, up-and-comers, because what they're trying to do is they're trying to get their team ready for the Olympics, especially trying to get them all on their prime. We made a video on both those teams. We'll see who the, who the victor is at the end of the day. But with that, if you made it this far in the video... Thank you for watching. If you'd like to drop a like, if you really like to subscribing, tell all your friends and comment down below your thoughts on the Women's World Championship. Until next time, see you.